Starring Burgess Meredith in Assignment for the Prompt on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. One of the most unusual, now it can be told, stories of this war opens a new cavalcade season. Burgess Meredith in Assignment for the Prof on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. You can make your home fresh and attractive by painting your walls with Speed Easy Wall Finish. Speed Easy comes in 11 beautiful pastel colors, and it's easy to use. All you do is thin it with water and apply with a brush or roller. Speed Easy will cover wallpaper and most other wall surfaces in one coat, and it will cost you less than $3 to do the average room. It's Speed Easy wall finish, and it's made by DuPont. <laughs> Tonight's cavalcade drama tells of a fascinating secret of this war, a dangerous adventure undertaken by a civilian. All names of persons are fictitious. The DuPont Company presents Assignment for the Prof, starring Burgess Meredith as Professor Harold Moffat on the Cavalcade of America. warm, lazy spring morning in the southern university town of Vailhurst. Harold Moffat, professor of geology at the university, is standing on the porch of his house, gazing up at the clear blue sky. He is concerned with only one problem at the moment, whether or not his rose vines are going to bloom. Morning, Professor. Oh, good morning, Charlie. Looks like you're going to have a nice crop of roses. Mm-hmm. Looks like a Charlie, a little worried at first. Too much rain this month brought the aphis out, but this spray will get them. Yeah. Listen to the radio this morning? Mm, the radio? Oh, yes. Think the big show will start over there soon? The show? Ooh, the invasion, the second front. Oh, I don't know, Charlie. I'm not a military man. I leave those things to those that know about them. Yeah, me too. But it's going to be something when it does start. Yes, it will, but I hate to think of it. Yeah, me too. But it's got to be done if we're going to get into Berlin. Yep. They say those beaches in France are so well guarded that a flea couldn't get through. It's not going to be easy. Hal, it's ten after eight. Yes, I know, dear. Thank you. Well, you have to take the car to the garage this morning, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, good morning, Charlie. Morning, Sally. Well, i got to be going up to the campus, Charlie. Well, don't forget now. Leave the car at the repair shop. Pick it up this evening. Stop at the store for those things I wrote on the list. Now, Sally, dear, I may be a professor, but I'm not (laughs) absent-minded. Absent-minded? Anybody who can play bridge the way he does. Oh, now, Charlie, don't get him started on bridge. All right. See you later, Charlie. Sure thing, Professor. Bye, dear. Oh, Hal, you're not taking that spray gun to class. What? Oh, (laughs) now I'm sorry. And don't forget the list. It's in your right-hand coat pocket. All right, dear. Oh, great guy. I think so, too. Good morning, Miss Burns. There's not much mail, just a letter from the geologist's journal. Your article's due in ten days. Your first class is at 9.45. It's always at 9.45, isn't it, Miss Burns? Uh, Mrs. Moffat called. She wants to know if you left the car at the garage. Yes, I did. I also have. Yes, I do. I have the list in my right-hand coat pocket. Now, these are my notes for the morning. Yes, and you have a luncheon engagement with Dean Collins. Yes, I know. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> time for class. <laughs> What I have been discussing with the class lies more in the realm of archaeology than it does properly in the geological study. However, ladies and gentlemen, there is there is an overlapping of the two sciences that... Oh, excuse ver- me, Professor, but yeah. there's an important telephone call for you. For me? Yes. Well, very well. Uh, class, let's see. It's only five minutes left of our time. I think we shall dismiss. Good morning. Is it uh, my wife? Oh, no, sir. Washington's calling. Washington? Which one? D.C. You mean for me? Oh, yes, sir. No, this must be a mistake. They asked for Professor Harold Moffat. I see. All right. Thank you, Miss Burns. Excuse me. Uh, <clears throat> Professor Moffat speaking. Yes? When? 
I see. May I call my wife? A plane? Yes, I know where the airport is. Very well, I'll be there. It was for you? Yes, Miss Burns, I have to go to Washington. Oh, yes. Is there something wrong? Well, I haven't the slightest idea. The War Department has an airplane waiting for me at the airport. The plane, they'll have me back here in time for dinner. Oh, I... What's the matter? My car's at the garage. Oh, I can drive you. Thank you. I'll... <clears throat> well, let's go. This is extraordinary, Miss Burns. Just think. A plane waiting to take me to Washington. <laughs> Professor, you were one of 20 men investigated for a certain job. You're a geologist and soil engineer with a great amount of field experience, right? Well, yes. We're going to ask you to go on a mission. Highly dangerous, highly secret, highly important. Yes. You will be asked to leave this country for 90 days to serve in the capacity for which you are so admirably suited. As a geologist? Exactly that. I I can't say any more now. Will you uh, take the job? Well, now... May I think it over? No, you must decide now, in this office. If you say no, there's another man waiting. Now, I, I, I can refuse. Yes, yes, you can. If you take the job, you may not come back. Oh? You are 48 years old, Professor. Yes, that's right. I, uh, I mention that because you will be subjected to hardships which will tax you to the utmost. I see. The mental strain will be worse than the physical. Is it a worthwhile job, Colonel? I mean, it's really doing something. Yes. I can't refuse then, can I? I didn't think you would. Thank you, Professor Moffat. The plane will take you back to Valehurst. And, uh, by the way, we leave it to you what to say or not to say to your wife. Ah, thank you. I'll, I'll think of something. <laughs> see why you can't write to me. I'll try to, dear, but you see, this is a somewhat secret mission, and the government doesn't want our route known. Oh, of course. Well, now, you're all packed. Yes, I'm all packed. Sally, there's something that I... Yes? I... I, I'm going to miss you. And I'll miss you. But 90 days aren't so long. No, 90 days aren't, but I... How? Will you be gone long? There's a chance of it, Sally. Well, we'll make the best of it. Now, Hal, don't think you're a young man and go running around with just a shirt and no coat. And for heaven's sake, don't work yourself half to death the way you always do. No, I won't. And please take care of yourself and don't worry. Goodbye, Sally. Well. I haven't been kissed like that for a long time now. Yes, uh, that one has to last you for 90 days. Uh, General Beecham, this is Professor Moffat. Welcome to England, Professor Moffat. Thank you. You're the last to arrive. Please join the others. Gentlemen... You are scientists from all the English-speaking allied nations, civilians. However, I shall talk to you as I would men in my command. Because technically, you will be. You know this assignment is dangerous. You know you may not come back. You've been investigated thoroughly, but... And please listen carefully, gentlemen. There is always the chance that someone may talk. I am going to tell you plans known only to a handful of top-ranking officers. Before I do so... I order anyone who thinks he may talk to leave this room now. Very well. If someone does talk, if there is a leak, if security is breached in any way, you will not be court-martialed, you will not be fined, you will not be censured. Instead, you will disappear from the face of the earth. I know that sounds rather melodramatic, but millions of lives at stake. There is still time for any one of you to change his mind. Good. Good. Now, this is your mission. Certain beaches of the Normandy coast have been selected for the invasion of Hitler's European fortress. That, gentlemen, is the secret. It is imperative that we have more information concerning those beaches. 
We must learn where steel mats are necessary to support the weight of our equipment. Where equipment may be put ashore without mats. How much weight every section of the landing beaches will support without giving way, causing our trucks, tanks and other artillery to bug down and perhaps spell failure, even disaster. That is your job, to test those beaches. You will work at night, high during the day. You will work in pairs. You will undergo a rigorous combat course of all going It's nice to get up in the morning. Oh, the morning. Hannah, does it ever it's stop sunny. raining in the British Isle? <laughs> uh, it develops into a thick fog after the bit. <laughs> and you may have my word for it that the fog is every bit as wet as the rain. Oh, I'm tired, Mac. Aye, that I am too, Professor Moffat. It's not a good thing for men of our age to be wallowing in the mud and climbing fences and walls like small children. Every bone in my body's bruised. Oh, well, cheer up, Professor. The worst is coming, and not far behind, is my guess. Maybe so. We've been training for three weeks now. Three weeks, eh? Oh, when I think of my cozy flat at the University of Edinburgh, I wonder why I didn't open my mouth when I was asked if I wanted to decline this. <laughs> Probably for the same reason I didn't. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to catch some sleep. You? I will if I can get my legs into bed. For myself, oh. Professor, I lie on my side to save my back. Professor McKenna, uh, Professor Moffat, uh, fall out immediately, full equipment. Oh, not again. But we just got back. Oh, well, there's nothing for it but to play along. Now I know what they meant when they said we may never get back. We may never even start. We won't be able. <laughs> Gentlemen, this is the real thing this time. It was necessary to do this suddenly. Arrangements have all been made. You know the beaches you're to test. You're familiar with your inflated boats. You land by rowing ashore. Your boat officer will give you final instructions. Goodbye, God bless you, and the best of luck. Right. Are you ready? Yes, sir, I believe so. The Normandy coast is straight ahead. 500 yards. You? Well, then, uh, yes, we are ready. Your rubber boat is inflated. This way, please. As quiet as you can. Cut the motor. It's as quiet as the grave. Grave? I'd assume you didn't even mention that word. I'm sorry, Mac. You ready for action? Yes. Equipment loaded in your rubber boat. When Lachlan briefing, as soon as you hit shore, unload, deflate the boat, and hide it. If you run into trouble before you reach shore, fire a rocket. We'll be waiting out here for 15 minutes. If we don't see your rocket, we'll assume that you're all right. And if it's me asking too much, when will you be back for us, laddie? Four nights from now. Go out here and wait. Suppose, <clears throat> pardon me, suppose you don't show up? We will. But let me warn you, gentlemen... But if you're not here, we'll wait until just before dawn, and we'll leave. And we won't come back. Good luck now. Godspeed. You are listening to Burgess Meredith as Professor Harold Moffat in the dramatic adventure Assignment for the Prop on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company. Maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As the second part of our story opens, Professor Harold Moffat, far from his southern university campus, is crouched in a small boat off the German-held Normandy coast. This mission, one of the most dangerous of the war, is to test the beaches for the coming invasion. Black as the insides of the Dale's parlor. How long have we been paddling? Fifteen minutes. Well, we should be there. Can you see any lights? Not a sign. Hey. Wait, Professor. Look to your right. A flicker. Yes, Mac. Paddle to the left. That must be the sentry post. Hey. Come, hurry it up, Professor. Hurry it up. Watch it, Mac. Well, we've got the equipment ashore. Deflate the boat. Aye. 
Here it goes. Oh, devil, it's as loud as the Midland Express on the moors. Put the valve underwater, quick, man. Stay right here, Mac. I'll check the orientation points. Take care, right? Yes, don't worry. Set the equipment up for the first test. I'll be right back. Aye. Good luck. Same to you. Mac? Mac? Aye, Professor. That is the sentry post up there just beyond the curve. You remember the, the, the photographs? Well, there's nothing to the east for almost 500 yards. We'd better get to work. Well, the best way is to take sections of the beach for about, oh, 100 yards each night. We can make the tests at 10-yard intervals. Right. Here's the first quarter pipe. we better sink it in the section. Hold it, Mac. Go ahead. Oh, my. I've never known a rubber mallet to make this much noise. Like thunder it is. Is the pipe sinking? Aye, fast. This is soft stuff here. Steel mats will be needed. Oh. Professor... Got dogs. Mm. Yes, well, <clears throat> you'd better keep going. When dawn breaks, I'll take the first turn sleeping. You stand guard. Hey. I need to spot the sentries when they make their rounds, how many there are. Once we've learned that, we can work faster. All right, Mac? Here we go. Again. <laughs> ready, Professor. What have we got tonight, Mac? Hmm. K rations. For a change? <laughs> Three days and nights here without so much as one hot bean. Oh, I'm telling you, man, once I get back to Edinburgh, I'll never look at another cold meal. Well, only one more night, Mac. <sighs> yeah. What have you got there, Professor? Oh, it's a rose. Yes, I found it beside the ruined house where we hid yesterday, you know. I grow roses back home. I home. Mm -hmm. Your wee wife will be proud when she hears. Hey, Mac, did you hear a dog? Ah, oh, we've been hearing things these three nights. It's nerves. You've inflated the boat, have you? Yes. Oh, hi. Every night in case we need it. Wait, what's that? That's Germans. Keep down. That's the dog's got our scent. Aye. We'll have to make a run for the boot. Our equipment. It's buried safe. Here they come. Stop. Mac, give me the rest of the K-ration. Are you daft? Make for the boat, Mac. This food will throw the dogs off the scent. Now go ahead. I'll nearly leave you Don't here. go ahead. I tell you, I'll launch the boat. If they're shooting, I'll come back for you. This ought to do the trick. That'll hold them. Wait, Professor. Here now. I'll lend you a hand. There. Start paddling, Mac. They're coming. They're wasting their ammunition. Firing in the dark. Oh, man, here comes a jerry with a torch. Flashlight won't shine this far, I hope. Anyway, the dogs are following that K-Rash night scatter. Good for you, Professor. Now, let's go out to sea. We've got to save our records. We'll land in another place and go back for them tomorrow night. Lean to your paddle, Professor. I think it's down this way. Come on, we've got to get that equipment before the Jerry. Aye, this is our last chance, Professor. But if their dogs traced our scent... No, I don't think they did, Mac. Last night's tide must have washed all the traces away. I hope the Jerry's have relaxed from the scare we gave them last night. I don't hear anything. Oh, oh. Here we are, Professor. Yes. Our equipment hasn't even been to start. Good. We'd better hurry and load the boat. Aye. the last of it, Professor. Now then, let's paddle away. Wait, we'd better be sure we didn't leave anything. Oh, I it would ne'er do if they should ken what's about to happen on these beaches. I see the mallets are here, the oh, core pipe. What's the matter? There's something on the beach there, Professor. Jerry's. Just one. Sentry. No dog. He hasn't seen us. But he will if we stay here. He stopped. Looking at the sand, he is. He's suspicious, man. 
I... If he sees us, he's coming this way. There's only one thing to do, Mac. Oh, did you ever kill a man? No. 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 I never either, but... You seen the book, Professor? I think so. Oh, no, we're in for it. You stay here. I'll work around and back of him. Good luck, Professor. Professor, Professor, are you all right? I think I'm all right. You got him in the nick of time. Oh, you cracked his skull, Professor. Is he? Is he dead? I didn't know, and I didn't care. Come along, we've got to run for it. He made enough noise to wake up the whole of Europe. They heard it. Oh, into the boot. Go ahead, I'll push on. To the yours, Professor. Pull hard, lad. Pull hard. Look, searchlight. Oh, the devil. If they get us in that light, we're done for. Can he pull any harder? To the right, Matt. To the right. Can he pull hard with all the stuff in the boot? We've got to get it back. Aye, then we'll have to pull with it. Let's go. Matt. Oh, Matt. There's nothing left across the shoulder, that's all. But you'll, you'll have to pull by yourself. Yes. A boat. Back a boat. Far away, but, but it's ours. It's ours. Can you make it, Professor? Oh, I think so. I, I've got to. Oh, good morning, Charlie. All rested from your trip? Oh, I'm all over it now. Harold, you know it's almost 8.30. Good morning, Charlie. Morning, Sally. Professor looks fine, doesn't he? Wonderful. That trip did him a world of good. Guess you've been listening to the news this morning, huh? Mm, yes, looks like the real thing, doesn't it? Oh, it's D-Day, all right. 11,000 planes for cover, tanks and trucks landing right on the beaches of Normandy. Ah, that takes nerve, doesn't it, Professor? They're brave boys, Charlie. They sure are. Now, you and me, Professor, we're a little too old for that sort of thing. Yes, I guess we are, Charlie. A little too old. Now, Hal, you better go. It's all right, dear. Goodbye. Goodbye. And don't forget the list in your right-hand coat pocket. No, I won't. Bye. Yep, he sure looks great. Yes, he does. You know, he ought to take more trips like the one he just come back from. Gave him a good rest from that teaching job. Yes, sir. Good rest. Our thanks to you, Burgess Meredith, and to all members of tonight's DuPont Cavalcade cast. Now... Now, here is Gain Whitman. American industry will make every effort to provide the greatest number of jobs now that the war is won. Here is a statement about jobs quoted from the Army-Navy Journal by Mr. Walter S. Carpenter, Jr., president of the DuPont Company. Mr. Carpenter said, Everyone agrees that our number one objective, now that the war is won, is a high level of productive employment. But it's not enough, it seems to me, to talk of providing the returning serviceman or woman with jobs. It is our plain duty to see that they return not only to a wage and a task, but to an economic environment in which they can do useful work and advance and develop. It is our hope that the chemical industry will be able to contribute in an important way to this prospect. The expansion in chemicals and allied products since World War I, as reported by the Census Bureau, has been encouraging. In 1919, the industry gave employment to about 70,000 workers. By 1939, after a series of depression years, the number of chemical workers had grown to nearly 300,000. That indicates a sturdy, if not spectacular, rate of progress. But chemical manufacture is a contributory industry, an industry which exists to supply and develop other industries. And it's in this phase that its effect on national employment has been notable and in which it offers its greatest promise to future gain. Scientific progress, as represented by chemistry, has created, since 1920, 
many entire new fields of enterprise, each of which, in turn, has generated new auxiliary activities and markets and job opportunities of its own. There is, first of all, the actual manufacture of new chemical products alone. There are many thousands of Americans today making cellophane, nylon, synthetic rubber, holding jobs which did not exist at the end of the last war. There are thousands of positions created by product improvement and development. In 1925, for instance, there were 19,000 employees reported in rayon manufacture. In 1939, there were nearly 50,000. In 1919, the air conditioning and refrigeration field was so small that it occupied few more than 5,000 workers. In 1939, there were 35,160. The longed-for return to this country of veterans over a comparatively short period of time will no doubt create many problems of adjustment for them and for industry. These adjustments will require some time and a great deal of thought, forbearance, and industrial statesmanship. But American industry must and will go forward and will need the help of these men to do so. In this program, the chemical industry must and will surely play an important part. Certainly, that is the resolve of the DuPont Company maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Cavalcade programs of particular interest to servicemen and women will be broadcast overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. The music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Our Cavalcade play was written by Russell Hughes and Bernard Fines. We invite you to listen next week to Michael O'Shea and Richard Conti in Cargo Over Burma on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is the National Broadcasting Company.